Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Earth Science Region to View podcast series created by Hummocks Middle School Earth Science Department. Today, we're going to be talking about an important topic called the seasons and revolution. Now, revolution is going to be an important factor here because it's going to be our trip around the sun. Don't get that mixed up with our spin on the axis called rotation, which gives us day and night. Now, the characteristics of revolution include the idea that we revolve once every 365 days or about a degree per day. It gives us the months, the years, and anything to do with our seasons, and we revolve around the sun in a counterclockwise direction. Now, an idea here that supports the fact that we revolve is that we sometimes see certain constellations at different times of the year. Now, the Big Dipper, Little Dipper, they're pretty close to Polaris, so we'll see them throughout the entire year, 365 days. But certain constellations like Orion, for instance, that's only a seasonal constellation. For the most part, you see Orion during the wintertime. And that's because the sun gets in the way. Okay? Our viewpoint of a lot of constellations, because the sun is so big, it gets in our way of our viewpoint of some of these constellations. So certain constellations are seasonal, which kind of gives some evidence there that we do move around the sun. Now, we do have some reasons for the seasons here. Now, obviously, revolution is going to be a big one, but it's not the number one reason. The tilt of our axis. If we didn't have a tilt of our axis, our temperature here in New York would be about 60 degrees year-round, and we wouldn't have any seasons. The fact we have a tilt and the fact we have a curved surface to our planet, the sun's insulation, the sun's energy, essentially, hits the surface at different angles based upon the tilt of the axis. So that's why certain latitudes are hot and certain latitudes are cold. It's all about the tilt. Now, obviously, revolution is going to have a big point here. And same with the parallelism of the axis. It's just a fancy way of just saying that our axis always points to Polaris. So it's very consistent as our trip around the, around the sun continues. So there's the actual tilt of our axis, 23 and a half degrees. And based upon where the sun is going to be in relation to the tilt of our axis, sometimes the northern hemisphere is very warm, like our summertime, sometimes very cold, like in our wintertime. And the fact we have a curved surface, the sun's energy hits at different angles based upon the latitude that you're on. Now, you see that the sun's energy coming at the North Pole, the equator, and the South Pole all have the same width until it hits the surface of the Earth. You'll notice that the North Pole and the South Pole, they're significantly wider than where it's going to hit at the equator. The more wide or the more spread out the light's going to be, the weaker it's going to get. That's what we call intensity. It has a very low intensity. The lower the intensity, the less energy the sun's going to have, the colder the temperature's going to be. We say that that sun at the North and South Pole has a low angle of insulation. You have a very low temperature, and you're going to have a situation where the sun energy is going to be very, very spread out. That's why it tends to be very cold at the North and South Pole. Now, unlike the equator, where it's very concentrated, you have a very direct angle there. You almost have a 90-degree angle where the sun's energy is hitting the Earth. And you can see that that's why the sun's energy is going to make the tropics so warm. So let's just say this is synonymous with the North Pole. See the sun's energy coming in. See how wide it is when it hits the top of that roof. And that angle right there is only about 20 degrees above the horizon. Low angle of insulation, low intensity, very cold. You compare that with the equator or the equatorial or tropics, you see that the sun's energy is very, very concentrated. It's going to hit at about a 90 degree angle. So very, very different angles of insulation very, very different intensities of insulation and very different temperatures with those latitudes. Now, it's very important for you to understand where the Earth is going to be in relation to the Sun when talking about the seasons. At position one, you'll notice that the North Pole is completely illuminated and it's tilted towards the Sun. That's Northern Hemisphere summertime. You see at position two, the North Pole is tilted away from the Sun and it's in complete darkness. That's going to be Northern Hemisphere winter. As soon as you figure out summer and winter, then you can go counterclockwise around the sun and you can go in order in terms of winter, spring, summer, and fall. So position three is going to be spring and position four is going to be fall. You have to figure out summer and winter because spring and fall, there's no way to tell the difference because they're an equinox and they are going to have equal characteristics. So when you look at your seasons in the northern hemisphere, realize that the southern hemisphere is exactly opposite. So position one would be Southern Hemisphere winter. Position two would be Southern Hemisphere summer. Position three would be Southern Hemisphere fall. And position four would be Southern Hemisphere spring. So they're exactly opposite what we have here in the Northern Hemisphere. 
Now, a couple terms you can hear me talk about, the zenith, which is going to be the point directly above the observer, and the word insulation, which is essentially the sun's energy. It stands for incoming solar radiation. Now, the incoming solar radiation is going to hit predominantly in the tropics, and that's going to extend from 23.5 degrees north to 23.5 degrees south. And obviously, that's also going to incorporate the equator as well. That's where the sun is going to be at the zenith throughout the entire year. Every latitude between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, some latitude will have the sun at the zenith directly above you at some point. We only worry about the first day of summer, the first day of winter, the first day of spring, and the first day of fall. That's where these three latitudes come into play. Now, here's what you need to know regarding your summer solstice. It happens on June 21st. The sun is at the zenith at the Tropic of Cancer. The North Pole is in 24 hours of daylight. South Pole is in 24 hours of darkness. And we are at a position called aphelion, which means that we're farthest away from the sun at this point. Now, because we're farthest away, we're still going to get some direct sun in the northern hemisphere because we're tilted towards the sun. New York is going to have the longest day of the year. New York is going to have about 15 hours of daylight on this specific day. So summer solstice, extremely important. You see the North Pole is in 24 hours of daylight. South Pole is in 24 hours of darkness. And the Tropic of Cancer, right there in the middle, is going to get the most direct sunlight on this specific day. So again, you see that our northern axis is tilted towards the sun. There's where our summertime would be. And you'll see specifically some of the daylight hours that you get. The Arctic Circle, 24-hour daylight. New York would get 15 hours. The equator is always 12 hours of daylight year-round. Antarctic Circle gets 24 hours of nighttime, 24 hours of darkness. And again, the Tropic of Cancer is going to get the most direct sunlight. Here's what you need to know for the winter solstice. December 21st, the Tropic of Capricorn is going to be the location where the sun's going to be at the zenith. The North Pole gets 24 hours of nighttime. Now the South Pole gets 24 hours of daylight. And this is a position called perihelion. We're technically closer to the sun in winter, but the northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun. This is going to be a situation where New York is going to get nine hours of daylight, and it's the idea that it's considered what we call the shortest day of the year for New York State. North Pole in 24 hours of darkness, South Pole is in 24 hours of daylight. You see the Tropic of Capricorn is getting the most direct sun at that latitude right there. Okay, again, here's our winter time. We're tilted away from the sun. Northern Hemisphere are tilted away from the sun at position C. And again, your daylight hours, 24 hours of darkness for the Arctic Circle. You have nine hours of daylight in New York, 12 hours at the equator, 24 hours of daylight at the Antarctic Circle. Finally, here's what you need to know for your two equinoxes. The vernal and autumnal equinox, basically the first day of spring and the first day of fall, you're going to get 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of nighttime. Okay, Around the entire planet, from North Pole to South Pole, it's extremely important to you understand that the entire planet, from North Pole to South Pole, gets 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime. The latitude that's going to get the most direct sun here is going to be the equator, which is going to be the, basically the sun's going to be at the zenith on those two dates. So you can see the equator is getting the most direct sun, and the entire planet is getting 12 hours of daylight. Okay, so there's your equator right there. And you can see all my basic latitudes, the important latitudes here, the equator is going to get the most direct sun, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of nighttime throughout the entire year. And make sure you understand where those latitudes are going to be found. So there is one of your equinoxes at B, and the other equinox at D, so make sure you understand where winter, spring, summer, and fall are going to take place. So extremely important with that. Other than that, good luck with your seasons. Good luck, good luck with your revolution. Hopefully this helped you out a little bit. Thanks so much.